Father, we love you tonight. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you adore the person of Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you that you love revealing the person of Jesus to us. I just pray for each and every person in this room. We just call upon the Holy Spirit. We just ask that you would reveal more of Jesus to us. Lord, uh, so many of our prayers are powerless. So much of our speech is not filled with the unction of your Spirit. Pray that you would create in us a, a holy discontentment. Lord, we, we want to see people healed when we pray. Lord, we don't want our words to bounce off of ears. Lord, like they do, I just tell you that I'm <clears throat> hungry for you, Lord. I'm desperate to see you move, Lord, tangibly. Just pray that you would create that hunger inside of our hearts, Lord, that when we would pray and that we, when we would minister, Lord, demons would tremble. Lord, your kingdom would advance. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would anoint, Lord, the men in this room. Lord, that your word would fall like fire, Lord, out of our mouths. Lord, that there would be, Lord, just a, a desire, Lord, to see lives transformed before our eyes. I pray that we would spend time with you. I pray that we would spend time ministering to you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would forgive us for using you, for treating you like a prostitute, for wanting the benefits of having relationship with you, but caring, caring little to actually spending time with you. Thank you that you're available to us tonight. We thank you that you're alive and you're well and you're here. And I just pray that we would cherish you and that we would cast our, all our affection upon you that you're good and that we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs> that we should be spending <clears throat> adequate amounts of time in prayer, really expressing our feelings and our desires for who God is to us. I'm going to begin uh, lesson two uh, tonight. You're at the Samuel Company. This is a, a group that's dedicated to um, learning about uh, the gifts of prophecy. And I encourage you to bring, bring a Bible or a notepad. If you don't have one, just let me know. Uh, we're going to talk about words of knowledge tonight. There's the prophetic gifts, there's four things that make up the prophetic gifts. Gifts, words of knowledge. Number two, words of wisdom. Number three, discernment or distinguishing of spirits. And number four, the gift of prophecy. So when we talk about the prophetic, we're talking about those four specific gifts. We talked about what exactly those were. And now we're going to target words of knowledge. And um, when I begin to pray, concerning words of knowledge, I really um, think that we have seriously underestimated the power of the gift of words of knowledge. Um, as I was just praying today and thinking about it, um, Psalm 127.4 came to mind, and it, it says this, like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. That has nothing to do with words of knowledge, talking about children, but I felt like the Lord began to talk to me about how we are warriors in His kingdom, and what He wants to fill our quivers with is words of knowledge. How many people have ever been around words of knowledge before? Someone has, has given a word of knowledge. Um, maybe a couple of us in here. I really believe that the most skeptical people... Um, when you begin to talk about words of knowledge are people that have never experienced it before. Um, 
So we're going to talk about words of knowledge tonight. We're going to get into it. And I, I just want to start out by saying words of knowledge are so underestimated. I really do believe that any person pursuing ministry at a Bible college, at a seminary, I think that they should teach whole courses on words of knowledge. We spend so much of our time arguing with people about faith. We spend so much of our time preaching the gospel to people until our, our faces are blue. And I, I don't know if you know me real well, but honestly, any time that I ever, if, that I ever engage someone that doesn't know Jesus or someone that does, I am always constantly praying that the Lord would give me a word of knowledge. Any time I have ever, 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 I've been doing street witnessing for 10 years now. Any anytime I talk to someone out of church, I am constantly praying. Jesus, would you give me a word of knowledge? And we're going to, again, talk about what a word of knowledge is, but I'm really beginning to ask the Lord, Lord, give me a word of knowledge. What is something that you can reveal to me that will absolutely, I'm going to call it, rock this person? I want a word that's going to rock them. I want a word that's going to shock them. I want a word that's going to be like, wow, that was God. You guys hunger for that? that? That's really what I'm talking about. Some people call it power evangelism. I like to call it presence evangelism. I mean, seriously, have you ever, like, I've witnessed people just like blue in the face preaching the gospel. Nothing's happening. I've been, I've seen people argue for two hours, and I'm like, come on. I, I need some, something of the kingdom here. So something that, that's going to... So I believe that the Lord wants to... Wants to come on in. Are you sure it's all in? You're welcome. It's okay. I, I believe that the Lord wants to fill our quivers. Quivers with words of knowledge. So let's get into it. I'm excited. I think that the Lord is... I'm going to share some of my own personal experiences with words of knowledge. I'm going to pass that around. The uh, food for thought tonight is um, this. You guys can laugh. It says prophecy is 80% preparation, 20% inspiration, 100% perspiration, and 1,000% trepidation. Prophecy. Prophecy is 80% preparation. What does that mean? That means that if we want to hear God, we've got to spend time with God. Yeah? If we want to hear from God, we've got to spend time. 80% of the pro prophetic is preparation. 20% is inspiration. A lot of times when the Lord, the Holy Spirit, begins to speak to me prophetically, especially at a corporate gathering, He's speaking to me about things a lot of times that I've already studied. When the Holy Spirit speaks to me corporately, you guys see me prophesy in services, different things like that. When I prophesy, when the Lord speaks to me, He's speaking to me about things that I have most of the time already studied. 20% inspiration, 100% perspiration. Remember when I, the Lord began to speak to me, man, I just started shaking. My hands would get sweaty. I was like, oh, Lord. A thousand percent trepidation. Okay, let's turn to John chapter 16. We want to dedicate the night talking about the gift of the word of knowledge. You can find all of this in 1 Corinthians 12. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is a gift of the Holy Spirit that's available to believers. John chapter 16. Uh, we're going to start reading at verse 12. These are the words of Jesus. I'm reading from the NASB. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative, but whatever He hears, will speak. I want to read this very carefully. 
This is talk, This is Jesus Christ talking in red letter edition. And He's talking to us about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Verse 13, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative, but whatever He hears, He will speak. The Holy Spirit is living inside of each and every person in this room. When the Holy Spirit speaks, He's not speaking on His own initiative. He's speaking what Jesus tells Him to speak. We're going to dive in deep tonight. I call this heavy revy. This is heavy revelation. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us, He's going to guide us into truth. He is not speaking on His own initiative, but He's speaking what the person of Jesus is telling Him. He will speak and He will disclose to you what is to come. Now this is shocking to me because so many people do not know what the future holds for them. Yes? Yes? So many people do not know, I've met Christians all my life, that are either totally have accepted that we're just going to walk around blind, we're good, just part of the tough road, part of the desert season, or you have people that completely don't believe in, in God being able to speak futuristically at all. And I take them back to John 16 and I'm like, okay, so translate to me, He will speak and He will disclose to you what is to come. Does that sound futuristic to you? Does that sound like if we spend time with the Holy Spirit, we really spend time with Him and we don't use Him, that He will reveal to us what the future holds? He might only do it in part. He might only give you a glimpse and then ask you to walk a walk of faith. But this is something that we have to get down inside of our spirits. The Holy Spirit is living inside of us. And He speaks what Jesus Christ is saying. I want to lay that as a foundation tonight when we talk about words of knowledge. Is everybody clear on that? According to John 16, the Holy Spirit does not speak on His own initiative, but reveals what Jesus is speaking. Okay. What is a word of knowledge? Look on your sheet. A word of knowledge is a specific fact about a person place, or event that was not obtained through natural means. It could be someone's name, occupation, birthplace, birthday, details about their past history, or other information about them. Never place restrictions on what the Spirit of God can reveal to you about someone's life. This is a real gift. This is a powerful gift. This is an incredible gift. I believe if that people really understood what a word of knowledge was and it was in its power, people would just be starving for it. Again, I want to take you back to, I have done street evangelism all my life. Welcome, guys. There's a seat over there. Okay. How many people have ever witnessed and you just felt like it wasn't going anywhere? Okay, I've been talking to Jehovah Witnesses lately. Okay, talking to me about how Jesus isn't the Son of God. Or, excuse me, some of them believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but He's not God Himself. You know, you take them back to Hebrews chapter 1. Jesus is the radiance of the Father's glory, the exact representation of His being. 
So I'm like, okay, you guys say that Jesus isn't God, but explain to me Hebrews 1 where it says Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. They're one. And they're like, well, what about Colossians 3? And I'm like, what about, and what about, and what about, and you're just like, blah, 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 blah. You ever been there? You know, you just feel like you're running circles. When I engage people in these conversations, I'm dead serious. A lot of times people just talk, and I'm like, Lord, tell me something about this person. Reveal to me something about their life supernaturally. T tell me something that will blow them out of the water. Let me give you guys a couple examples. But, but this is a, I like teaching on this gift and I get it, it gets super excited because I have seen people's lives absolutely transformed by a word of knowledge. I was um, in Red Lobster here in Lakeland about three years ago and I was at a birthday party just really minding my own business. And I saw a guy that walked across a restaurant. He had really long hair, kind of had a rough appearance. And the Lord immediately spoke to me and said, that guy right there has a broken relationship with his sister. Okay, word of knowledge. Something about this guy that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I said, okay, why? Why, why did you share that? And he said, I want you to go up and tell him that I'm going to heal him. And I'm also going to deliver him from drugs and alcohol. Okay? Very clear. Okay? You guys know me. This stuff just... When we hunger for this stuff and we expect it, it'll come. So I'm sitting there at a, at a birthday party. Just minding my own business. This guy's like 6'6". Six, six. I mean, he's a big guy. I'm like, okay, you know, restaurant, awkward situation. Try to talk the Lord out of what he wants to do. You know, those type of situations. And... I'm like, you know, trying to figure out this, this awkward thing. And I was like, okay, whatever, Lord, I, I don't care. I told you a long time ago to make me a fool for you, and I guess this is a, a, an opportunity. <laughs> so I walk up to this guy. He's at, a, he's at the register. He's punching this thing. And I, I just walk up to him, and I say, hey, I'm Jeremiah. Uh, I'm a Christian, and uh, this is what the Lord said to me. I just told this guy this, and his face just went white. And it just began to shake, and they just began to cry. Just blown away, just like, what? I mean, you can really spook people, but I mean, this guy was like, what? And I was like, I said it again, just, just stone face. And he was just like, you know, isn't that so much easier than arguing with somebody? <laughs> but it was just like, he was like, you know, I was like, here's my phone number. It's like, if you want to call me and learn more about where this comes from, let me know. He called me up right after he got out of work at midnight, just like, just crying. Like, man, I've been addicted to drugs and alcohol my whole life. He's like, man, every church that's come through, he said, I'm a, he, he said this to me, he said, I'm a God hater. I hate God. When I hear people talk about God, I bash him. I said, he said, I do not like God. And he said, when you said that to me, something struck a chord in my heart and I want to know more. The next day I met him at Palace Pizza in downtown Lakeland. Led him to Jesus Christ. Had to do a little bit of deliverance on him because he, you know, he was inhabited by other things. But, um, you know, just, just, just one example. I mean, I, I could literally, what is it? Seven, I could, I could seriously tell you stories till midnight. Tell you stories till midnight about the power of a word of knowledge. A person, a place, an event. I'm, I'm, when all you guys stand here, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, tell me about this. Tell me about your life. Tell me about her life. Tell me about Jason's life. Let me, tell me something. Tell, because it's a, a word of knowledge. It's about inquiring. It's about hungering for the unseen realm. You guys want to be activated in that? Do you want to have conversations with people and the Lord will just speak to you and you're like, bam, what about that? I, I, I've got, the Lord is, I, I've been set up with people all the time. I was, I was in a Starbucks one time. The Lord told me to go up there late at night and I walk in and I knew exactly as soon as I saw this guy, the Lord had it. I just called it, called it an assignment. I knew that the Lord wanted me to go there. And I walk up to the counter and I ordered a coffee and I turned right around and there was this guy that was like six inches from my face. And this is what he says to me. 
The spirits sent you, didn't they? The spirits sent you, didn't they? And I said, yeah, the Holy Spirit. And I said, why don't we go outside? So I went outside. This is in Brandon. And uh, I go out to this conversation. I have this conversation with this guy, and he is a Buddhist spiritualist. And he starts talking to me about his power. You know, so he starts, you know, telling me he can do this and he can do that. And I let him do this and I let him do that and all this different stuff. And I said, okay, I'm going to show you the power of God right here. And I said, I'm going to tell you about your life. So I started walking this guy through her life. I, you know, I told him at 13 years old, this is what happened in your house. And at 26 years old, this is when you were rejected. And all these different things like that. And this particular situation did nothing for this guy. I can tell you stories where words of knowledge broke the hardest of heart. And I can tell you stories where words of knowledge didn't really move people. But I do know that there's power. And I do know it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And I do know that the reference to Psalm 124, that if we want to begin to minister to people and have a heart for people, God wants to fill our quivers full of words of knowledge. Look to the person next to you. What would God want to speak to you about their life? There was a man that sat, sat on the plane with someone this guy immediately revealed himself and said, Hey, I'm here to curse you in your ministry. We just sacrificed last night. I'm going to curse, curse you. Just, just mad. This guy was ticked at this minister. I'm mad. So this guy just starts cursing him and cursing him and cursing him. And while this guy is getting cursed, he's asking the Lord, Lord, what, what, what's up with this guy? What's his deal? Why is he angry? Why did he join the occult? This is a true story. The Lord shows this guy a picture of this Jack Russell Terrier. Of a Jack Russell Terrier dog. And he says, at, at a young age, this was this guy's dog. And this dog got hit by a car and killed. And that day, this guy said, I hate you, God. I'll never serve you. Guy's a Jack Russell Terrier dog. So he lets this guy finish cursing him and then he tells him, and the guy just begins to cry. Just begins to weep. The Spirit of God begins to intervene. And before you know it, this guy comes into the kingdom because someone operated in word of knowledge about a Jack Russell Terrier. Isn't that amazing? That this is a, this like, so excites me. This is a gift that God has given us that we can partake in. It could be someone's name, occupation, birthplace, birthday, details. Never, can you say never? Never. Never place restrictions on what the Spirit of God would, could reveal to you. I was ministering down in Sarasota about two years ago. and um, I do minister prophetically at times. Like I'm, I'm ministering Friday down in Fort Myers on dreams and visions and when I prepare to minister prophetically, I, I prepare differently. If I'm going to minister prophetically, I just worship a lot. I just spend a lot of time with the Lord. If I'm going to preach, I spend a lot more time in the Word. Okay, so I, I was down, down in Sarasota, and when I was in prayer, just worshiping the Lord, the Lord had given me a few names, people's names that were going to be there. So I got done ministering, and I said, uh, is there a pat here? Is there a Patrick? That's, a, that's the name, a word of knowledge, a name that the Lord had given me. I didn't have anything else. So I'm up here at this, this place and just saying, hey, is there a Pat here? This guy raises his hand and he comes back. and I lay hands on this guy and I prophesy to this guy. and I, I tell him, Pat, the Lord says to buckle your seatbelt. You're not going anywhere. Though you think you're leaving, you're staying right here. That was it. He goes and sits down, and I'm like, well, okay, hope that went well. <laughs> Comes up to me afterward, and he said, you know, that's interesting. He said, I got in, a, in an argument with the leadership here uh, right before the meeting, and I got my car and left when worship started. And he said, I, I live a while away, and right before I, I walked in my door, the Lord told me to go back. I've got a word for you. This guy had walked in about five minutes before I called his name. You believe that? 
that got just a name, just Pat. So here this guy got in a fight with the leadership and told him, CLA, I'm out of here. And what did God say to him? You're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. The word of the Lord secured him. God, this is this is something that's so amazing. How many people, raise your hand if you've ever flowed in words of knowledge at, at times? Maybe, maybe a couple people. So they're all different experiences, different encounters. But I want to look specifically tonight at John 4. If you'll turn there. Um, I want to look at uh, words of knowledge, uh, word of knowledge in the life of Jesus that I believe had a, a huge impact. Before we dive in, I want to go back to this John 16 passage. If you remember what it said, it says the Holy Spirit does not speak on His own initiative, but He speaks what the person of Jesus has already spoken Yes. Can we say yes? Yes. Okay? So when we pray for words of knowledge, okay, I'm praying for Matt, and I'm like, Lord, would you give me a word of knowledge for Matt? What am I asking the Holy Spirit to do? Translate from Jesus. Bingo. Guys, this is huge. When I ask, uh, Lord, give me a word of knowledge for Brandon. Holy Spirit, speak to me. What am I, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, reveal what Jesus has spoken. It's very relational. It's like saying, Jesus, if you were here right now, what would you say to this person? Yes? Let's get that down inside of us. So John 4, let's start reading at verse 7. There came a woman from Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman therefore said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Sounds like Jesus is in the wrong place at the wrong time, or perhaps the right time. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who you says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, and are you who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. He said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. So Jesus is having a conversation with this woman at the well. What does he say? Go call your husband. And she says, I have no husband. And what does he say? You've had five husbands. Does that sound like a word of knowledge? Yeah. And the one that you're living with isn't your husband either? Can you imagine walking up to someone and saying that? <laughs> The woman said to him, here we go, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. So part of the prophetic gifting is words of knowledge, yes? Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem you shall worship the Father. You worship that which you do not know. We worship that which we know. For salvation is from the Jews. So skip, skip to verse 27. And basically he reveals himself as, as the Messiah to her. 
And this is what, this is what uh, verse 27 says, At this point his disciples came, and they marveled that he had been speaking with a woman, yet no one said, Who do you seek, or why do you speak with her? I want to tell you that sometimes God, the Spirit of God, draws you into the most unusual places to give you words of knowledge. Sometimes the Spirit of God will draw you into the most unusual places in order to give you words of knowledge for people. Jesus is totally out of context here. He's not supposed to be talking to a woman. He's not supposed to be relating to the Samaritans. All this different stuff. And he strikes a word right in her heart. So 28, verse 28, So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to him. And then meanwhile the disciples were requesting him and saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. The disciples there for we're saying to one another, no one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Verse 39, we're almost done here. And from that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things I have done. Think about this. Think about this. This blows my mind. So Jesus drops a word of knowledge. Hey, you've had five husbands and the husband that you now have is not your husband. And he reveals himself as Christ. This woman leaves her pitcher of water, runs to the town that she's from, and says, hey, come listen to this guy that's told me everything that I've done. And guess what happens? The whole town gives their life to Jesus. Why? Because of a word of knowledge. So the question that we have to reckon with tonight is, are words of knowledge powerful or are they not? Is this something that we should seek? Is this something that we should desire? Is this something that we want activated in our life? Yes, no, maybe yes. so. Yes. yes. Look at your sheet. It is imperative that we understand that the word of knowledge led to a revelation of Jesus. Okay, later, later at the end of the class, I'm gonna we're gonna flow in words of knowledge. Okay, for a lot of us that's pretty scary. Okay. But let's say I brought somebody up here and I said, we're all going to pray that the Lord would give us a word of knowledge about this person. Translated, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal what Jesus is saying about this person. It could be a time, an event, and a date. It could be a lot of different things. Okay? Here's what you have to know. When you're praying, you're not like pulling things from the air. You know, a lot of times when I tell stories, they're like, where did that come from? Like, that word about the guy's sister, like, how did you get that? <clears throat> did you just, like, look up and it just, like, you know, you caught it like a fly? Or, like, how did how does that happen? Because a lot of us, when we pray at the end, we're going to be like, yeah, come on, you know, like, you're looking at him, you know, staring at him like, you know, okay. <laughs> you know God, give me something. What we have to understand is that we, we, we don't give words of knowledge. It's, it's not like, okay, I get a couple words of knowledge for Jason, and I start telling Jason about his life, and then I come to Peter, and I was like, oh, Peter, give me a high five. Wasn't that great? I just, you know, just told Jason about his life, and man, that was awesome. I, I've seen people do it all the time. Guys, I've seen people perform miracles and be like, awesome. Christians. Oh, Brendan, that was so cool. That guy's knee got healed. And then they just walk off. This is, is, is seriously, I, 
There are, there are major movements in the earth right now that flow in signs and wonders, and so many of them never present the gospel. It's disturbing to me. I think it's a prophetic sign. I really, really do. Any time a word of knowledge, any time that the Lord reveals something about someone's life, it's an invitation to invite them into relationship with Jesus. This is key. If you don't take anything away from tonight, I am not giving you a license just to just to come up, just to Lord speak to me about this person and just rattle off stuff and that be it. The Lord is seeking to awaken things in people's hearts. It's like that guy at the Red Lobster. The Lord spoke a word and awakened him to, wow, this is God. And then I said, yeah, you need to accept Christ. Jesus went to towns, it says, and he rebuked them. He said, if the miracles that were performed in you, in one context, he said, in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have all turned and repented. And I believe that there is a lot of weight behind, a lot of times, miracles come to bring repentance. That's something that we seriously, there has to be a gospel presentation with the supernatural. I, knew, I know way too many Christians that are, it's like they get a high off of supernatural ministry, but are not interested in inviting people into relationship with Christ. <clears throat> That's something that I really... Guys, that's what separates Christians, prophetic people, from psychics and sorcerers. This is serious stuff. Saying, Holy Spirit reveals something to me about Jason's life. Translated, Holy Spirit reveal what Jesus is speaking. Jason, this is what I feel like God is saying. And this is who Christ is. Versus what a psychic or a sorcerer would do is, guys, I, I guarantee you that you could go find a psychic in Lakeland that would tell you somewhat accurate truth about your life. If you went, maybe you'll find one that's pretty accurate. Maybe you'll find one that's off. I don't know. But I know that there are people out there that can flow in words of knowledge. But what's the difference? The difference is where is the spirit coming from? What are we seeking to do? <clears throat> this is something that I'm passionate about. Any time that a word goes forth. I've been in some situations where people, I spoke a word. We were at um, uh, the Cobb Theater months ago. And I was with Brandon and we walked up to, um, what's that restaurant called? Mongolian. Mongolian Grill. And I just started prophesying to these people that were drinking, smoking cigarettes, whatever. And I just started, bam, the Lord was just bam, bam. And they were just like, what? Just the, the Lord was just, I just called me, he was getting them. He was getting them and they were like, and, and Brandon could testify, I was, I was doing the best that I can to say, hey, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Think about this. John 4, a word of knowledge, Jesus, a word of knowledge, led to revelation of Jesus. That's something that I, I want you to understand because it's just, it's missing I've read books, I've, I've done different things, and there's very little connection in people's minds with words of knowledge and supernatural ministry connected to Christ. It always has to lead to Christ. Uh, we do not ask God for information about a person's life to impress others or ourselves. This absolutely disgusts me. I cannot stand when I'm around other gifted people in the prophetic that are simply ministering to people just because they think it's fun. We ask for words of knowledge so that a door can be opened to the Spirit of God enlightening the eyes of a person's heart to know Jesus Christ as Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, this is another awesome scripture. This really talks about, I believe, it talks about, um, it, it's specifically talking about prophecy. But swallow this. Think about this. 1 Corinthians 14, 24. But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all, he is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, 
And so he will fall down on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among us. So if we're all having a meeting in here, and we just start declaring what God is saying, and you know, Sally Mae walks in here and we start lighten her up with words of knowledge and this is what God has for you. What does it say? It says that the, the secrets of this person's heart is laid bare. And then what does it say? Here's the key, what I'm talking about. What was her response to ministry? Worship. She bowed down and worshiped. Stay away from supernatural ministry that worships Men. We have idolized people that flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in America. It's sad. It is so sad. If you've ever been around people that just flow in the Holy Spirit and they do miracles and they do things, and like people would like worship them. Like to take your eyes off this person. Let's worship God. That's true ministry. True ministry, true supernatural stuff, it, it produces, it bursts a hunger and a worship for the Lord and Him alone. Because when you take God out of the equation, everyone's just a man. The secrets of His heart are disclosed. The secrets of hearts are disclosed. You know, sometimes when you minister in words of knowledge, you're going to say things to people that they didn't know was inside of their own heart. You're going to say things that they've forgotten. You're going to say things that some will deny, and it's true. of their heart are laid bare before them. Think about that. Something that we have to ponder. How is it that we can prophesy to people and the secrets of their heart are laid bare? I remember ministering over a girl with a group of people and um, the Lord gave me a passage of Scripture. And wouldn't you know it was the passage of Scripture that she read for her devotional every morning. I began to talk to her about it. I began to call forth what she was called to. That she didn't even know she was called to. But when I spoke it. It resonated in her heart. Has someone ever pulled something out inside of your heart and you were like, yeah, that's it. That that's that's what I was, that's what I've been searching. That's what's causing so much fraction. Yeah, that's it. Proverbs says, the man, the plans of a man's heart are deep waters. The plans that are inside each and every heart in this room are deep waters. Deep waters, so deep sometimes that we don't even know what's inside. But it says, a man of understanding draws them out. The plans of guys, think about this. We're out, we're out at Chili's, we're out at the Moons, we're out, we're surrounded by thousands of people. Will we dare just to say, Lord, what's up with this guy? What about her? Prophetic people always ask questions. I don't think I've ever had a waitress where I didn't ask the Lord, Lord, give me something that would just rock her. The secrets of their heart are laid bare. Them. It's like as, as a prophetic group, we're just 
We're just calling to. Here, let me let me show you what's inside. Let me let me show you the secret. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm referencing. Uh, <clears throat>